Imagine living in a city that is slowly dying. A city that once thrived with industry, culture, and opportunity, but now struggles with unemployment, crime, and decay. A city that loses its population, its businesses, and its vitality year after year. A city that faces an uncertain future and a bleak present. This is not a dystopian scenario. This is the reality for many cities around the world. Cities that have been hit hard by economic, social, and environmental challenges. Cities that have failed to adapt to the changing times and needs of their residents. Cities that have become symbols of decline and despair. But what if there was a way to turn things around? What if there was a way to revitalize these dying cities and restore their glory? What if there was a way to make these cities livable and sustainable again? That is the question we will explore in this video. We will look at the causes and effects of urban decline, and the solutions for urban revitalization. We will examine some of the most successful cases of cities that have bounced back from the brink of collapse, and some of the most promising strategies for transforming cities into places of innovation, opportunity, and resilience. This is not just a matter of curiosity or nostalgia. This is a matter of urgency and importance. Because cities are not just buildings and streets. They are people and communities. They are engines of growth and hubs of creativity. They are the backbone of civilization and the future of humanity. So join us as we discover how to revitalize a dying city. A dying city is not just a city that has fewer people or less activity than before. It is a city that suffers from long-term decline in its economic, social, and environmental conditions, resulting in high levels of unemployment, poverty, crime, pollution, decay, and abandonment. This not only affects the well-being and opportunities of its residents but also undermines the national competitiveness and wastes valuable resources that could be used for development. A dying city is a city that needs urgent intervention and transformation. But what causes a city to die? And what are the consequences of urban decline? There are many factors that can contribute to a vicious cycle of decline where people and businesses leave the city resulting in reduced tax base and demand for services and further deterioration of infrastructure and quality of life. Some of these factors include deindustrialization, the loss of manufacturing jobs due to automation, outsourcing, or competition from other regions or countries. Globalization, the increased integration and interdependence of the world economy, which creates winners and losers among cities depending on their ability to adapt and innovate. Suburbanization, the movement of people and businesses from the urban core to the outskirts or surrounding areas, often facilitated by car dependency and highway construction. Poor governance, the lack of effective leadership, management, or accountability in the public sector, which leads to corruption, inefficiency, or lack of responsiveness to the needs and aspirations of the citizens. Lack of investment, the insufficient or inappropriate allocation of resources to maintain or improve the physical and social infrastructure and services of the city. The consequences of urban decline are manifold and interrelated. They include Economic stagnation, the low or negative growth of income, output, or productivity in the city, which limits its ability to generate wealth and create jobs. Social decay, the deterioration of the social fabric and cohesion in the city, which manifests in increased violence, crime, drug abuse, homelessness, or social isolation. Cultural erosion, the loss or dilution of the identity and heritage of the city, which reduces its attractiveness and distinctiveness. However, not all cities are doomed to die. There are also examples of cities that have successfully reversed their decline and become more livable and sustainable. These are cities that have revitalized themselves by employing strategies such as diversifying their economy, moving away from dependence on one industry or sector and developing new sources of income and employment based on knowledge, innovation, or creativity. 
investing in education, improving the skills and qualifications of the workforce, and creating a culture of learning and research that fosters innovation and entrepreneurship. Improving public transportation and green spaces, enhancing the accessibility and mobility of people and goods within and outside the city, and creating more attractive and healthy environments for living and recreation. Some examples of cities that have successfully revitalized themselves include Pittsburgh, once known as the steel city that dominated the U.S. steel industry until its collapse in the 1970s and 1980s. It has since reinvented itself as a hub for education, healthcare, technology, and culture, leveraging its world-class universities, hospitals, and museums. It has also improved its air quality, reduced its carbon footprint, and increased its green spaces, earning it the title of America's most livable city by Forbes magazine in 2010. Chattanooga, once dubbed as the dirtiest city in America by Walter Cronkite in 1969 due to its severe air pollution. It has since transformed itself into a model for environmental sustainability and economic development, investing in renewable energy, public transportation, and broadband internet. It has also fostered a vibrant arts and culture scene, hosting festivals, concerts, and exhibitions that attract millions of visitors every year. Bilbao, once a declining industrial port city in Spain that suffered from unemployment, poverty, and terrorism in the 1980s and 1990s. It has since become a global icon for urban regeneration and cultural innovation, building the Guggenheim Museum, a stunning architectural masterpiece that showcases contemporary art and attracts millions of tourists every year. It has also diversified its economy, promoting entrepreneurship, innovation, and education and creating new jobs and opportunities for its citizens. Medellin, once the most violent and dangerous city in the world due to the drug cartel wars and guerrilla conflicts that plagued Colombia in the 1980s and 1990s. It has since become a symbol of hope and resilience for urban transformation and social inclusion, implementing programs such as the Metro Cable, a cable car system that connects the poor and marginalized neighborhoods to the city center and provides access to education, health, and employment. It has also fostered a culture of civic participation and cooperation, involving the community in the design and implementation of projects that improve their quality of life. However, there are also examples of cities that have failed or struggled to revitalize themselves. These are cities that have faced challenges such as corruption, mismanagement, austerity, gentrification, or neglect. Some of these examples include Detroit, once the motor city that was the heart of the U.S. automobile industry until its decline in the 1970s and 1980s due to competition from foreign markets and rising oil prices. It has since become a symbol of urban decay and bankruptcy, suffering from population loss, unemployment, poverty, crime, blight, and debt. It has attempted to revitalize itself by attracting new businesses and investments, especially in the technology and creative sectors, but it still faces many challenges such as poor infrastructure, low education levels, racial tensions, and environmental problems. Cleveland once a thriving industrial and commercial city that was known as the sixth city of the U.S. until its decline in the 1960s and 1970s due to deindustrialization and suburbanization. It has since become a poster child for urban decline and stagnation, experiencing population loss, economic decline, social decay, and environmental degradation. It has tried to revitalize itself by investing in its downtown area, waterfront, and cultural institutions but it still struggles with issues such as unemployment, poverty, crime, segregation, and pollution. Gary, once a booming steel town that was founded by U.S. Steel Corporation in 1906 and named after its chairman. It has since become a ghost town that is plagued by unemployment, poverty, crime, violence, and abandonment. It has attempted to revitalize itself by attracting new industries such as casinos and tourism, but it still faces many obstacles such as corruption, mismanagement, and lack of resources. Flint, once a prosperous manufacturing city that was home to General Motors until its downsizing in the 1980s and 1990s. 
It has since become a notorious example of urban crisis and injustice, suffering from population loss, economic collapse, social unrest, and water contamination. It has sought to revitalize itself by diversifying its economy, improving its education system, and restoring its water quality, but it still deals with many challenges such as health risks, legal battles, and public distrust. So what can we learn from these examples of urban revitalization? And what can we do to help revive a dying city? Here are some of the main lessons and recommendations for urban revitalization. Have a clear vision and long-term plan that involves all stakeholders. A dying city needs a vision and a plan that defines its goals and strategies for revitalization and that aligns with its strengths, needs, and aspirations. This vision and plan should be developed and implemented with the participation and collaboration of all stakeholders, including public officials, private sector, civil society, and residents. This ensures that the revitalization efforts are inclusive, responsive, and accountable. Focus on human and social capital as drivers of development. A dying city needs to invest in its people and communities as the main sources of wealth and innovation. This means improving the skills and qualifications of the workforce, creating a culture of learning and research, fostering innovation and entrepreneurship, promoting social inclusion and civic engagement, and strengthening social networks and cohesion. This enhances the human potential and social capital of the city. Balance economic growth with social equity and environmental sustainability. A dying city needs to pursue a balanced and holistic approach to development that considers the economic, social, and environmental dimensions of revitalization. This means ensuring that the benefits of growth are shared by all segments of society, especially the poor and marginalized, and that the costs of growth are minimized or mitigated for the environment and future generations. This creates a more equitable and sustainable city. These are some of the ways that a dying city can revitalize itself and become more livable and sustainable. However, there is no one-size-fits-all formula or blueprint for urban revitalization. Each city has its own unique context, history, culture, and potential that requires a tailored and customized approach. The key is to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the city, identify the opportunities and threats it faces, and engage the people and partners who can help it achieve its vision and goals. By doing so, a dying city can turn its decline into an opportunity for transformation and renewal. In this video, I have shown you how to revitalize a dying city by looking at some examples of success and failure, and some of the key factors and strategies that can make a difference. A dying city is a city that suffers from long-term decline in its economic, social, and environmental conditions, resulting in high levels of unemployment, poverty, crime, pollution, decay, and abandonment. But it is also a city that has potential and opportunities for transformation and renewal. To revitalize a dying city, it is important to have a clear vision and long-term plan that involves all stakeholders, focus on human and social capital as drivers of development, leverage existing and attract new resources through partnerships, incentives, and branding, balance economic growth with social equity and environmental sustainability, and experiment with new ideas and learn from failures. By doing so, a dying city can turn its decline into an opportunity for transformation and renewal. If you like the video, you will be a great help to us. Leave your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching.